the new top four. No, no, and it's like lit- like it's buried, like you said, like it's buried. I don't feel extra pain, you know? Yeah, yeah. Which is good. Which is a good <sighs> thing, huh? I'd like to shout out to everyone hanging out with us tonight, <laughs> including Jared. He says, "Cringe, cringe, cringe." You know, it's cringe. Saying cringe. Oh, nice. I say cringe, though. Oh, that, that's cringe, man. You sold on that. Oh, man. You're based. What? Wait, what? I, exactly. <laughs> he sold. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, how's everybody doing tonight? Uh, it is a Tuesday night, Thursday night, Thursday night. <laughs> and the Kings lose again to the Pelicans. Again. For the fifth time this season. We've got five on it. Pelicans clap that ass. They got five on it. Uh, how you doing? I, I, I'm yeah. like, you know, whatever. I, I'm better than the other night. I was not good. Yeah, We're, we have a lot to go over tonight. Here's the stone cold reality. Oh, Stone cold you're truth re- for you. You're really, you're really... <laughs> A lot of a lot of wrestling for that you wasn't, lately, huh? That wasn't wrestling. I was just saying stone cold truth, not literally, not literally stone cold. Okay. I'm not having stone cold show bro. Hey, let me tell you something. And that's the bottom line. As, oh. as he continues. Um Pelicans are just a flat out way better team. Oh yeah. Way better team. Oh. It's not even close. And I'll tell you what, if they get that six seed and OKC. Gets that three seed? I think the Pelicans are beating Oklahoma City. Oh, yeah. No, yep. and it's not just how the Pelicans look against the Sacramento Kings. There there was no Brandon Ingram playing in this game and in some other games. And wait, wait. Ingram didn't play tonight either? Yeah, you know, breaking news. B.I. did not play. C.J. McCollum, I think he turned 22 tonight. Dude, C.J., hey, man, I- I'm sorry. You got to get over Sacramento not drafting you. Yeah, Jeff Petrie's not even here anymore. <laughs> you're still mad. You take it out on us every single time. You know what? That's cringe. You trying to knock down nine threes in oh. a game, that's cringe, you ass. Oh, man. Dick. All right, so here's the deal tonight. Yeah. We'll talk about what went down, what we think went wrong tonight, and then we got to look ahead. Kings and Suns tomorrow night. Now we're in an interesting spot. The Kings, the top six is done. The Kings are going to be a play-in team. Where will they finish? Seven, eight, nine, or ten? We'll find out in the next couple of days. And as it stands right now, the Suns are in the seventh spot. They're in Sacramento tomorrow. The Kings are in eighth. Tied with the Warriors and Lakers, 9-10. Three-way tie right now, 8-9-10. Kings could be playing a home game. They could be on the road or they're going to be in a situation where they have to win twice to get into the playoffs. Wow. Can you say drama? (laughs) Can you? Uh, Drama. Good job. I was just making sure. (laughs) Oh, we are live. All right. Uh, Let's have some fun. Let's get into it. As much fun as we can after what went down tonight at Golden One Center. Do some more. Come down in three, two, one. Hit my music. Deuce and more. Do and mo, do and mo. They tell you what they know. Do and mo, do and mo, do and mo. The podcast that you know. Welcome into the Do and Mo podcast. Recording on a Thursday night. Kings taking on the Pelicans. Spoiler alert: Pelicans won <laughs> five. And oh, against the Sacramento Kings this season. They are without Brandon Ingram. They got up big in the first quarter, took a 23-point lead. The Kings rallied back by the half, yeah. made it a game. In fact, in the third quarter, cut it to two. But then the Pelicans led by 23 again in the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. Kings rallied back to make it a little interesting at the end. But ultimately, the Kings had no answer for CJ. No answer for Zion. No answer for Trey Murphy. No answer for anybody. The Pelicans drop 135 points, beat the Kings 135 to 123. With the loss, Sacramento is now 45 and 35 and have been eliminated from the top six, meaning they will be a play-in team. They've got to win a play-in game 
or two potentially to get in. They take on the team that's right in front of them in the seventh spot, the Suns, tomorrow night in Sacramento. Wow. This podcast presented by our friends over at Northwest Exteriors. Check out TrustNorthwest.com. I'm Deuce Mason. That's Morgan Reagan. Mo, how you feeling? Just, uh, I fine. Yeah. D- you know, not, not down, not up. Just like, eh. Like reality, real life. That's what it feels like. It just feels like it's like um, when real life problems happen, you know, like, oh, you can't pay a bill or like, oh, you stub your toe or I don't know. Just like the, just the things that just kind of just suck. Uh, yeah. Just suck. This is tonight. It just kind of sucks. It just sucks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know why. And it's a basketball game, right? It is a game that I did not play in. A game that I actually enjoyed uh, throughout some of it. But it sucks. It sucks. We did a preview to this game. And it was talking about what went wrong for Sacramento in those matchups for sure. But going into this game, it's how I felt the last few times I've seen them play the Pelicans. The Pelicans just have every advantage it seems possible. Yeah. Zion and Valanciunas up front. Major problem. Huge. The length. Literally. The shooting, the defense, oh the physicality, check, 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 all in favor of the Pelicans. And they slapped the Kings around. And I, I know what you were saying. We were exchanging texts. It's like one of those things where you go, man, the Kings showed fight tonight. They got back in the game. They're down yeah. big early in the first. They b- battled back. It wasn't pathetic. Sure. It, this just exposes. This is a game that exposes every single one of the Kings' flaws. Those flaws, of course, magnify times a billion without Malik Monk and Kevin Herter on the floor. But even with those guys, this is a terrible matchup. If the Kings played the Pelicans in the playoffs, the Kings would not win a game. If the Kings play them in the play-in, they're gone. Like, Thank you. It, it's just, this is a terrible matchup. And now, you have to, you know, big picture-wise, as we look in through t- toward the offseason, you have to find ways to improve so you do not face a matchup like this and just get slapped around every single time. After the first four matchups, how many times did we talk about, oh man, if the Kings are in the plan, who wouldn't you want to see in the plan? Who wouldn't you want to see in the playoffs? What yeah. team did I consistently say? And I said the Pelicans. I said the Pelicans because I just track record. And it wasn't about like, hey, what adjustments can the Kings make to really slow down this, that, blah, blah. This was their best game against the Pelicans. And they were down by as many as 23 twice, twice, twice. in this game. Like, and again, yeah. it, it just, we've seen this Kings team play so against really good teams in this league. But when it comes to the Pelicans, who are a good team in this league, when it comes to the Pelicans, it's truly the matchup and everything else about it. For example, Deuce, it felt like on every, not loose ball, but every like last minute scramble. Yeah, every like, scramble play, they hit every a three. Every scramble every play, scramble. it was like the Dyson Daniels is wide open down at the basket or someone else is open in the corner. CJ for three. Or Alvarado. In transition, yeah, yeah, Alvarado is like about to lose the basketball fade away corner three, and it was just like, uh, oh, okay, like this is what it is. And I don't know how else you slow that down or stop it at now, this point. With that said, the start tonight was Awful. pathetic. But that, that's I, I mean, it was. Yes. And, uh, you know, listening to Mike Brown after the game, he goes, you know, we just weren't physical to start. If I have to hear that one more time, you know, it, that to me is red flag, big time red flag for this group. And if I'm, I'm building this team going forward, we can't have this. Dude, this is the end of the season. You are fighting yeah. for a chance to get to the top six. I don't need to hear like, eh, you know, a team what didn't come out and play physical. It's not about Mike Brown saying that. It's about why is that a thing? Like, if you're a competitor. Yes, yes, yes. If, that. You, if you have any ounce of competitive fire in you, you're at home against a team that has slapped you around. Not once. Not twice. What? Not three times. Oh. What? Four times. Last Whoa. time they were in your building, they were up 50 points on you. And they won by 33. And then tonight, out of the gates, they took a, what, 33 to 11 lead after Trey Murphy hits back-to-back threes. Then out of the timeout, you turn the ball over. 
And I'm, it turns into a 17 0 run. Here, and here's why I know this team is capable of being different and looking different to start a game. I just go back to that game against the New York Knicks on their home floor. Not this last win at Madison Square Garden, but the one at Golden One Center. And it was, they understood the matchup. They understood the physical play that was going to be brought in with this Knicks team, and they matched it from the start. So you you know for the after four times of playing this team, you're about to play them for a fifth time. You know already not only from experience what you're going to have to bring out there, but also from just scouting and game planning and, wow. and doing your homework, the the type of intensity and physicality you're going to have to come out with, and you still don't do it this late in the season, a little confusing. Well, let's start talking about this game from the start of the first quarter. We mentioned the hot start. A couple of interesting notes to start this game that jumped out to me immediately. In some of the previous matchups, we've seen situations where Harrison Barnes was guarding Zion. Yeah. And Sabonis was on Valanchunas. To start this game, they switched it up. And, of course, you know what the Pelicans did? They went, okay, Valanchunas, here's the rock. You've got Harrison Barnes on you. The Kings were throwing a double at Valanchunas, a double from the free throw line. Whoever was at the free throw line would come over, whether it was Keegan Murray, Davion Mitchell, would come over and double Valanchunas. Now, here's the problem with that. If your double teams are soft, if you're not up and make, forcing him into a tough pass, you know, throwing it high or, or making him think a little bit, you know what Valanchunas is going to do? He's going to go, okay, Barnes on me. The, the help's going to come. Mm. I'm going to calmly kick it out. Oh, Trey Murphy's for three. Or, hey, I'm going to kick it to Zion, or he's going to swing it. Trey Murphy got red hot to start this game. All of his looks from three in the first quarter were wide open. And then he got confident. He's taken one from the Golden One Center logo and shit. So, right away, they expose a matchup. And this is my problem with tonight's game plan, okay? Harrison Barnes is not good for this matchup defensively against the Pelicans. There's not a lot of great options. I get that. But I'll tell you what's a better option. I would, this would have been changing it up, but this time of the year, I'm about doing these things. What? You start Trey Lyles tonight. You start Trey Lyles, another big body. Or get radical. You got Valentinus and Zion out there, and you've got Sabonis defending Zion mm -hmm. to start. Start Alex Lynn. I, I change it up. I, some of the best defense that the Kings played tonight was with Alex Len out there when the yeah. Kings went bigger. But every time the Kings went smaller and smaller is not hard to do. It's just play their normal lineup. They got exposed and they were hunting it every single time. Even the second half when they switched that matchup and had Sabonis on Valanciunas again, mm -hmm. they would just hunt it out. And then Zion, they, they'd hunt out Valanciunas back on Barnes. And then Sabonis is on Zion. It, it killed the Kings, and that led to so many easy looks to start in this game, and that's why they got off to a really strong start. Yeah. I mean, it, they, they just broke down the game offensively. I'm talking about the Pelicans. Offensively, they just simplified it. They like, Everything that they did, whether it was like two dribble jump stop, defense collapse and or comes up, this person is now open, dunker spot, but your back door. What I mean, it was just like... I saw it while it was happening, like live. Like I didn't, it was just like, whoa, like this is beautiful yep. basketball by them. And for the Kings, it just didn't feel like it was scrappy enough in those moments. Now, when they started making the comebacks, though, that is when the scrappiness started coming. Sure. That's when their hands were in the passing. That's when even like you saw those moments from Alex Len. And in those moments, though, I'm like, you have to play four quarters of this. Can I go back to one thing before yeah. we talk about how they got back into it? When I'm not oh, talking about how okay. they back, got back into it. I was, I was just, talking about the end of the quarter. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. I was just, yeah. So when the, we, we're talking about the double team, okay, you, you're obviously, if Harrison Barnes is defending Zion or Valanciunas, there's got to have to be help, and the Kings had to help a lot. But when you're throwing that double team from the free throw line, mm -hmm. like they were doing to start this game, what do you want from the guy that's double teaming? We're talking about being aggressive, but what's how do you force him to make a tougher pass? Because it felt like hands their double up. teams. I mean, hand, you just get your hands up in the passing lane. You take away vision, like decisive. But like, yeah, or you're yeah, you're talking about when a double team is coming. Yeah, on the Valanciunas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, but but Valanciunas is also a smart player. Like he makes quick decisions. Yeah. Like that. 
And, and I'm not acting like he's Luca making quick decisions. Like Luca can make any pass <laughs> right. on the floor with his quick decisions. Someone like Valanciunas, though, is still making the right play. He feels that second body and goes, I need to just get it out. It's not even getting it out and, and finding the open man. It's about just like passing it back out, getting that spray, because then that spray can find the open man and have that vision. You know, it's, yep. and that would always happen. He makes good decisions. Yeah, and the Kings were forced to help a lot tonight. So you're down big. It's 31 to 11. It's just a mess at Golden Ones that are fans starting to boo because it's like, again, wait, we're showing up and seeing the Kings get destroyed by the Pelicans. Like, what? this is a big game. What the hell is happening? I'll give credit. I thought De'Aaron Fox really turned it on in the final couple of minutes of the quarter. Fox went really aggressive, hit a couple of, th- hit, a, hit a three, got fouled on a three, took yep. it to the basket. He scored 10 of his 12 points in that quarter in the quarter in the final 218 of that quarter and then they were able to cut it to 34 23 they they went on a 12 0 run so you're like all right like it's not ideal but like you're in the game again (laughs) every time that they were back in the game again and especially even then it was like is this that last push is this that last push Mm -hmm. and it just felt like they couldn't hang on to it being their last push because the Pelicans would push push back. They would punch back. And the Pelicans never seemed rattled or desperate in any of these moments. It was like, okay, we're really effing up, but let's just continue to play our same game. Like we push the ball, we make our shots, um, just simplify the game for ourselves, especially in transition. It felt like everything was just so gorgeous for them, especially late in the game. It was just like, okay. I, I don't – King's transition defense was awful all night. Uh, they were – the transition offense was bad, too. So, at mm-hmm. the end of one, is 34-23. The Pelicans were 6 of 11 from three in the quarter. Sacramento had five turnovers that turned to, into 11 points in the first quarter. In the second quarter, Fox hits a three to cut it to 34-26. You're like, oh, down to eight. Right back in it. Let's go. Fox is feeling it. And then the Pelicans go on a 7-0 run. This is when we had, like, timeout after timeout, it seemed like. Uh, the Kings end up hitting back-to-back threes from Keon Ellis and Trey Lyles to make it 41-32. It's going back and forth. Now, this was a stretch where the Kings started to play a lot better, and it seemed like it kind of coincided with the fact that Zion slips, looks like he hurts his wrist. He goes out the six-minute mark of the second quarter, goes back to the locker room, does not play the rest of the half. Yep. And when he left... It was a seven-point game. The Kings at the half, it was 64-58. Harrison Barnes had a nice stretch. He had 11 points uh, at the half. Fox had 17. I thought HB did some nice things offensively out there, and it was a stretch where he was getting exposed defensively because they didn't have their two bigs. Yep. I, I mean, and you thought he was doing things defensively, you're saying. I, I'm saying he didn't get exposed defensively. I thought Wait, he was doing much him. better offensively. Yes, like he, there we go. There was a couple of times, like, Pelicans go into his own late mm-hmm. into that second quarter, and he was just cutting back door and yeah. getting easy looks around the rim. I love the way that he was moving without the basketball yeah. tonight. I thought he was doing a good job of remaining active, but then also remaining aggressive, attacking the rim. Um, again, even without Zion in there, it was just attacking, attacking, and then being in a good spot. I felt like they, a, a few of the guys, not just Harrison Barnes, would, would have that bunny underneath where – they were able to take that extra dribble, find a better angle, get a nice little easy two. And Harrison Barnes had a few of those. And that, yeah, it was yeah. a very positive thing to see from Harrison Barnes keeping this team in it. Harrison had that really nice play where he got the ball in the corner, put it on the floor, drove baseline, threw a, just an unbelievable pass around the defender to hit Davey on Mitchell open for three. I'm like, all right, Harrison, this is the type of aggressiveness everyone's been waiting to see from you okay on that road trip you averaged five points a game you couldn't make a shot you weren't noticed out there and you can't have that when Malik Monk and Kevin Herter are are gone so it felt like he kind of took advantage from the fact that okay like they don't have as much size out here I don't have to worry about defending Zion or Valanciunas I can kind of do my thing offensively and I thought he had some really nice moments to get the Kings back in the game and all of a sudden at the half, it's 64 to 58. How were you feeling at halftime when it was that type of deficit? I felt I felt good. I felt better. I still 
I mean, I didn't know what was wrong with Zion at that point, but yeah. it didn't matter to me. Obviously it, nothing. Yeah, like it that that's the thing. I think I think this game and I think the last two games, I've I've felt like a lot of numbness. <laughs> Like, I don't think that's, like, physically good or mentally good for my health. But um, even in this game, it, there wasn't – there was two times, and I forget when it was. Maybe it was at the – maybe it was right before the half, and maybe it was in the fourth quarter where I found myself going like this, like a little – Yeah, because yeah, you're like, oh, they're fighting. But only twice, only twice. And I'm like – and even when I did it, I was like, stop. <laughs> like, to myself. Like, you need to – calm down. Like – don't don't get all into this, and that's truly, I think, how I felt going into the half. Like, whatever. yeah, I, I think one thing, and I saw this in the second quarter, and especially in the third quarter. I thought the Kings in transition offensively tonight were terrible. The decision making. I mean, the Kings blew a four on two break in the second quarter. You you come up empty. It, it just too many times a brutal sequence. Yeah. Third quarter. Zion returns You're like all right well how's he gonna be you know it's his left hand that's his shooting hand is that gonna be an issue of course it's not an issue in the third quarter alone he had 17 points in the third quarter he was unbelievable before we get there I was talking about the transition stuff Keegan in transition I, I, Morgan this was if I'm the Kings coaching staff oh. this is Exhibit 1A of the play that would infuriate me with Keegan, Keegan Murray. This guy has all the potential in the world. I think he could be a really, really good player in this league. But until he realizes he's 6'8", six, 6'9", six, with size, mm -hmm. he, he, you can't play soft. Kings force a turnover. They get it to Keegan in transition. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. He slows up. And then by the time he slows up, the defense comes back, misses, puts some awkward shot up. Bro, go hard to the basket. Go dunk on somebody's head or get fouled and go to the free throw line. Sure. It's the inconsistency there. And that, to me, tells you everything about tonight's game. The Pelicans have this mindset where they play hard, they play tough, they play physical, they're coming at you. But... If you're on a four-on-two break and you don't score, that's a red flag. If you're Keegan Murray, you're one-on-one -on -one transition, but you got the ball. You, you're the... This is your time. Yeah. You've got the weapon. Yeah. Go strong. Yeah. It was infuriating to me. And then also you had a situation where I felt like the Kings started passing up some threes. And I don't know if they got in their head after last game where they're launching 58 threes, but they passed up some good looks, kicking it to Chris, Chris Duarte, who's randomly in the game, mm -hmm. and clank, clank, clank. He can't make a shot. Then you have a situation where Davion Mitchell gets a great rebound. Loved it. Just strong with the rebound. The Kings are making a push. <sighs> Throws a bad pass. Well, throws, throws a bad pass, and Zion did a fantastic did. job of reading it, too. It was like, and again, it was a bad pass. And Zion was like feasting right there, like, oh, I know where this guy's trying to outlet it. Boing, gets it, steals it. And what did it lead to? A three ball from Alvarado to make it 93-83. They just had so many, like, stretches where it felt like the game, the, the, the one that Keegan was, why it was so big, too, so Keegan doesn't go strong in transition. It was 64-60 at that time. Mm -hmm. If he scores there, it's a two-point game. Yeah. Instead, he misses, and the Kings give up a three on the other end. So instead of 64-62, it turns into 67-60. That happened all the time. Like that, it felt like that happened every other, every other, every couple possessions. It felt like that was happening. And, you know, at times I'm like, ah, oh, control what you can control. And that's what you could, the part you could have controlled was going up strong. The part Davion could have controlled after a great rebound was making a good outlet pass. You know, like those things, because the Pelicans are going to come back down either way, whether you, you get an opportunity on the offensive end, they're going to come back down and find some way to yeah. dominate. That's what you saw all game long. So then you had to make sure you're playing a certain type of perfect game. And that wasn't, being accomplished that wasn't being achieved and you know i think when you do talk about keegan not being strong there were other times that i did see him strong and so i do want to give love to some of those moments because i i think too when when i hear your passion about him being stronger and i completely understand it i think it's also really important to recognize in his second year 
the leaps that he has taken in these things. Yeah. But but with that said, year three is coming around. And when year three is coming around, if there's any of that soft shit, that's when someone's going to have a problem, you well, know? Yeah, no, and, that, and to your point, there was one play I noted. Um, he went, like, behind the back with a dribble. The defender came up, and he kind of leaned this, into him to I draw the contact. I believe that was on Herb Jones. Yep. And he went to the free throw line. And that's something he's got to do more of. And that's the type of aggressiveness I want to see from him. But th- th- that's my, my thing with him. Yeah. He's, he's been better this year at going strong to the rack dunking and not getting blocked like he did all the time last year but it's that inconsistency it's he's not comfortable all the time with yep. the ball one-on-one like he overthinks it and he has to this offseason work on that aspect of his game if he's, if he's going to take a leap and he'll work on it I'm not disputing that he's taken a jump this year especially defensively and he's doing more scoring than just catch and shoot threes but for him and for the Kings to reach where they want to go, he's got to take in year three the jump. And those are the areas you have to be better. It's having the mindset, dude, you are 6'8". You're I strong. Know, dude, be 6'8 and strong. But you, you also think about like when people hate themselves and then they're told to go look in a mirror and just tell them, like, go say how much you love yourself and say three good things you love about yourself. Like I'm great looking. I'm funny. So again, I know basketball. You don't hate yourself, so I'm I, not talking sometimes. about you. So what I am talking about, though, is someone like Keegan Murray, and I'm not acting like he hates himself. I'm acting – all I'm saying is that he is someone that we are telling, like, you need to look in the mirror and be stronger. It's so much easier said than done when you don't have the personality and or and or the right – mind it's education i don't know like i guess my point is there are there are ways to overcome this to teach your brain how to find that confidence to teach your brain and your mind to overcome these thoughts that you may have about yourself when you're out there that you that you can actually take a leap in that part of your game as well i just i think he can um i think he needs help from someone. I don't know who that is, but there's a shit ton of resources around the NBA. Well, we talk about that play in transition. That was the only one I labeled too. I mentioned the four on two. I mentioned the Keegan play. I mentioned Davion, that great rebound, the turnover and transition that led to a three. Uh, this one I didn't like, you know, Fox had a steal, good defensive play. He's pushing in transition, excited to see. And he decides to dish into traffic to Davion where there's guys everywhere. And it's a missed shot. These are blown opportunities. These are momentum shifting plays. And there's like three people in the paint when you make that dish. I don't like seeing that. Like you're dishing to one of the smallest players on the, on the court. Know your personnel. Know your personnel. Know your personnel. That's, I literally scream that. Know your personnel. And that's my thing is like the, these plays and like Uh, they lost 135 to 123. They're down 23 a couple of times, but these, these, these plays they change the game really fast. We're talking about cutting a lead to two. It turns into seven with a mistake. You have to be locked in all the time to but, make the right play. You can't be making mistakes. But especially at this level, especially at this point of the season, like we always, and anytime the Kings were playing the Warriors last year, it was like, okay, you got to play a perfect game if you want to beat them. Like, you can't make these mistakes because they're going to capitalize off your mistakes. With a team like the Pelicans, it was four pathetic games this season against them so going into this one it was like how can you one make this not a pathetic game but also make it a good game a good basketball game for yourself and by doing that they would have just needed to play close to perfect yeah. and and close to perfect is just the th- three things that we just mentioned not making that turnover on an outlet pass, not making that pass into Davion Mitchell when there's three big guys in the paint and Keegan not going strong to the basket on one one on one in transition. Yeah, because then all of a sudden you're making a mistake. They're getting out in transition, which mm-hmm. they did a great job of. Because you you were talking about the transition offense, but you mentioned the defense was bad. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's cross matches everywhere. Then you're you're just all scrambling around and they're getting good looks from three. And then you got Trey Murphy, bang, CJ McCollum just cooks the Kings. CJ McCollum will never forget the Kings organization. Mm-hmm. Forgive him for not drafting him when yeah. they said they were going to draft him. Like, dude, Jeff Petrie has been gone for like 
10 plus years. Like, can we move on? But he just absolutely has cooked the Kings this year. He is shooting coming into this game over 60%. 99%. Yeah, 99%. (laughs) CJ McCollum in this game, 31 points. He was 9 of 12 from 3. 9 of 12 from 3, 11 of 18 shooting. Oh, Zion, tw- uh, 31 points as well. He, had, he was 13 of 21 shooting. He had 6 assists, 4 rebounds. Trey Murphy, 27 points, 7 of 14 shooting. He was 6 of 12 from 3-point land. Before we get more into that, so at the end of the third quarter, with all that said, the Kings make a nice push. They get back in the game, but then they go into the fourth quarter it's 98 89 fox did a great job scoring at the end of that quarter which was huge a cr- i don't even know how he finished that to make it uh, a single digit game at 98 89 fourth quarter they just got exposed again i mean i, I this they couldn't guard and it, it didn't matter who it was like if zion was out of the game to start this quarter mm-hmm. and then they went s- smaller they had zeller in there and they were getting cooked by cj mccollum they started to throw blitzes at him. And, of course, you know what CJ did? He did what any smart player does when you throw blitzes. He feels it coming. He found Zeller on the roll. And Zeller made the right play. Kicks it. Alvarado, three. Infuriating. I would understand if it's like you're at this point in the season. You're a losing team. You're trying to practice. You're blitzing. Yep. Doubling guys. Whatever. This team does not, one, does not have the personnel to blitz. Yeah. And I say that, and, and you go, why? Is is the effort or what? It, no, no, no. It's literally the size. When you are blitzing someone at the top, but then your rotation's down low on even another, t- like even if it's smaller players, whatever, but like let's just say it's their bigs in there. You don't have a seven-footer in there protecting the rim, coming over, really showing their body. And let's say even at times Sabonis is out or he's rotated over somewhere else because he's capable of doing that. And then you have someone like Davion Mitchell down there either trying to sacrifice his body and take a charge or just keep his hands up. Like, it's just not enough in this league. And that's why I go, just don't. Just, like, let's stop. Let's not blitz. In this league in general? Just don't. I just don't I think I think you can get away blitzing when it's like there's one guy on the other team who can cook you and the rest of the players are like not good. Like bl- if you blitz guys, let's say you're blitzing Anthony Simons on the Blazers because they don't have a lot around him, sure. these young guys. Or you just get the ball in his hands, try to make these other guys who aren't comfortable shooting. But in this league, I just think like doubling sometimes and it's just these players nowadays are just too skilled. And mm-hmm. then on top of that, you've got shooting everywhere. Yeah. And if you have the right decision makers, this is just easy basketball. Like, how easy is it, honestly, if, all right, CJ's feeling the double come. And we saw this with Jalen Brunson in New York. Mm-hmm. What's he do? Brunson finds Hartenstein. But, and you make it quick. Wall. You quick, make it boom. quick. Quick decision. You know it's kind of make the quick pass. Boom. Same thing with CJ tonight. Quick pass, Zeller, boom. And you make a quick, crisp pass. It's not just like a nice little loopy loop lob over these tall people that are coming to trap you because then that gives them, the defenders, enough time to recover. It's making a nice, crisp, smart pass. And yeah, it's to at this point, I just like, I understand the thought process and I understand when you believe in your team and what you have seen with the improvements of their defense. But this team isn't it for, for blitzing, especially at this, at this time of the season. No, I didn't like it at all. And then even in the fourth quarter, I know this like, Oh God. I mean, I I felt like the Kings started to mail it in a little bit when Zeller had that dunk, that wide open duck uh, made it 120 to 100. Mike Brown used his final timeout of the of the game at the 648 mark of, of this game. His final timeout of the game, 648. He's just time after timeout, like what the hell's going on? Um, they Barnes and Sabonis hedged on an Alvarado pick and roll. Like you can't just guard that. Like you don't. You have to hedge on that, and then he just passes, and it leads to an yeah. easy bucket. Yeah. Uh, it was infuriating. So. Like you said, the defense has shown some great signs. I mean, they've been better. They're yep. 14th in defensive rating on the season, which is a huge improvement from last year. And they've been really good since the All-Star break. Yeah. 
But tonight was a huge step back. I mean, it was miscues. And then you start throwing gimmicky stuff because guys get hot. And you're like, all right, we're just trying to get the ball out of CJ's hands. It's like, dude, I'm sorry. Like, CJ's now just hitting tough shots. I'd rather him still try to make tougher shots. Like, then, a, like in the mid range, even though he'll still yeah. he'll still hit it, he'll still hit it. But like, you're just you're making him work, you know, like rather than like allowing them again because they simplify the game on the offensive end. So they go, okay, the geometry of the floor, and if there's two players here, then I know that so and so's open there. Then that so and so moves this way. Then we're gonna have a nice easy two. Uh, it's it's that easy at times, it feels like, for teams, but especially for the Pelicans and especially tonight against the Kings. <sighs> My goodness. Well, it was 125-103 with 6.02 to go. Yeah. And then the Kings go on a 10-0 run <laughs> to make it 125-113. Uh, the Kings did make it a little bit interesting, but it was just too... You didn't have timeouts left. It was too much to overcome. And then Zion just made plays. He's like, fine, I, I'll take over here. Nobody on this team can stop me. And that's what happened. 337 to go. An interesting thing that we may want to look at going forward. Fox drives the basket. I can't remember if he scored or not or got fouled. Uh, he might have scored I on think it. He scored. He landed on Herb Jones's foot, rolled his left ankle. He was kind of hobbled after that, went to the ground. He played. The rest of the way, yeah. he said after the game he's fine. But it's one of those things where it's like, you know, he definitely rolled his ankle. The Kings do play the Suns tomorrow. What's that going to feel like tomorrow against the Phoenix Suns? Yeah, I I hope I hope he's fine. But nobody's fine at yep. this this time of the season. So yeah, just another little shitty moment. And the Kings end up losing one thirty five to one twenty three. The Pelicans five and zero against this squad. A couple of other things from tonight I thought that were interesting. Colby Jones got off to a really bad start in this game, and he only played like two less than three minutes in this game. Uh, he had the ball in a pick-and-roll situation with Sabonis, threw it really low at his ankles, turnover, yep. that hurt you. Um, he had another turnover. Colby Jones ended up playing just two minutes and 49 seconds, had two turnovers, got a quick hook for Mike Brown. Yep. It's going to, I mean, that's going to happen. So, and then he ends up, we end up seeing some Sasha time again. Yeah, which wasn't, wasn't bad, you know, and, I, and I, I say that because I think sometimes when you're going up against so much length, it was like, yay, length is in there, you know? It was nice having a little bit more size with Sasha out there at times. Um, and it's interesting to see how this season, even though he's been on and off the court, that he's been able to pick up more and more that NBA pace and understand the NBA game. And he just looks more comfortable out there. Yeah. And that's why I hope he starts playing some more now too. Yeah. And it, I think Mike's in an interesting spot because he's going, we do not have anyone that like, he was talking about this before the game today. Who's getting downhill to attack. It's deer and Fox. Yeah. Keegan's not that comfortable with it yet. You don't have Malik Monk to do it, right? Trey Lyles isn't doing it. Sasha, can Colby do it a little bit? So he's like, I'll give Colby a look here. But Colby's also a young guy who spent the majority of this season playing in Stockton. Keon Ellis. Davion can do a little bit. But Davion. he also, he he's a smart player and understands when he's like, all right, not going to make it all the way in. I got to either pull up, float, or whatever, too. So I know. I love how Davion's playing same, right now. Same, same. I'm really so good. happy for him. So happy for the way that he's been just confident aggressive like Good there's defense there's shots, shots that he's taken now that i'm not going no no i'm just like that looks good for him you see the way that it flicks off his fingertips and i'm just like okay i'm here for it yeah so i'm happy that he's looking better the one thing from tonight harrison barnes when you look at the numbers 22 points five rebounds four assists i felt like he gave the Kings some much needed offense, he and did. I like what he did offensively. Yeah. He was a minus 18 on the team, <laughs> plus minus. I know single game plus minus, what's that really matter? But I think <laughs> Brown had such an interesting decision tonight. He needed Harrison, who has the ability to attack, play yeah. a little physical, and score, and who's when he's aggressive, can get to the free throw line. He can hit some shots, which he did tonight. He was 9 of 15. He was 2 of 6 from 3. And he, you know, had some nice passes too. You need that. So then you go, well, you also need Trey Lyles' size. Like, it, it was like this balancing act of, okay, 
we need Harrison's offense right now, mm -hmm. but defensively, we are so exposed with that front line of Barnes and Sabonis against Valanciunas and Zion. I don't know what the answer was tonight. Uh, I, I, and ultimately, they end up going bigger late with Lyles out there because they need some stops, but I, I don't know. It, it just, it's a bad matchup. It's a terrible matchup. There you go. There, I mean, just like say it what it is. I mean, that is what it is. Like, even after this game ended, I'm looking at everything and I'm thinking about, you know, everything that we're going to break down, like what could have been better. And, but ultimately, that statement this is a terrible matchup for the Sacramento Kings compared to so many other teams in this league that are very good basketball teams that it feels like the Kings know how to game plan for, they can um, slow down a certain skill set, whatever it is. But when it comes to Zion, his size, like you got to be able to match that with size. And you saw it at times with Alex Len and Sabonis out there. Len probably did the best job on him. But I, I'm kind of with you at times where I would have loved to even see, go be radical, go, go big, 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 Let big, Sabonis this. and Len. What? Why wouldn't you try that tonight? Like, for example... If I'm Mike tonight, and it's like, okay, this game's kind of like out of whack right now. Zion's taken over in the third quarter. Why not just try that lens of bonus thing? Because what if you do play this team in a play-in? Jesus. Right? You got it. You I, I would like to, to know what everything. it looks like. I'd yeah. like just a little sample of it. Like, you have a chance here to try things. And, out, and it's not showing your hand. If you're going to challenge me on that and go, well, look at the way that they were shooting from three-point land. They were 22 of 40, shooting 55% from three. And I'd be like, yeah, but they were making that with a hand in their face with the ball just moving around anyway. Like, in, well, I guess I guess my my point is, like, why not make life a little bit more difficult did, in the paint? You, you, to your point, yeah, they, they did hit some contested ones, but some of the ones they got early were off because they had to help. Like, yeah. They, they, the, yeah, Barnes was needing help or like they, Hey, Zion's getting downhill. The help has to come. And Zion made good decisions. Like how many assists did he have in this game? He had six assists. Damn. And then, you know what they did late. Like that's, what's so crazy about today's game, right? Is like these guards who will come up now and set screens for bigs. Right. Yeah. And that's what we saw that you, I think it was God, it might've been McCollum late setting the screen for Zion to get the switch, and then he's going downhill in a favorable matchup. It's easy. And, 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 and it makes sense. Like, this you, this game, the way that this league keeps evolving, the way that positions keep evolving, you got to evolve with it. Yeah. And, that, and sometimes I know looking at that, there would there would have been people been especially if it screwed up, why the hell did you go with Sabonis and Len? And it's like, well, there was there was no I answer. Tried it. I would try no it. answer or play more Lyles. Like, yeah, Trey Lyles tonight. This is what I, I don't get. Okay, and, good. Well, I, I do get it. I do get it because he was leaning toward Harrison Barnes, who can do more offensively. Still, Trey Lyles tonight played fourteen minutes. I thought Did, he should have been in more. And I'm not always about like, hey, you got to match up with the opposing team. But here's the reality: those two are giving you fits, like. Those guys are drawing so much attention. Yeah, Zion's going to need help if he's driving. Valanchunas is going to need to be helped on if he's being defended by Harrison Barnes. Like, you're just putting yourself in so many tough spots defensively tonight. The offense, you go, dude, they scored 123 points tonight. They, they hit 16 of 38 from three. This is great. That's a great sign for them to hit some threes. Keegan hit five of 10. Great. I love seeing the fact that Keegan got it going from downtown. Fox is three of seven. Mitchell, two of two. Uh, Lyles, two of four. I want Trey out there, one, because he can stretch the floor, but maybe he can make Zion work a little bit and then make him work defensively, right? And then he could bump him around offensively a little bit. I don't know. Just try some different shit. I felt like the Kings were trying to target Zion early offensively, but Zion was also, to his credit, you talked about this, he was very good with deflections. Uh, did he have how many steals did he have tonight? He had three steals. Yeah, yeah. I mean, w that first steal he had against De'Aaron Fox. De'Aaron was trying to spin on Alvarado toward yeah. the middle, and De'Aaron kind of lost his handle. It wasn't because of Zion, but Zion, he's just smart. He his instincts um, popped on it, started pushing it up. Boom, dunk. 
Just a lot of that. A, lo- a lot of deflating plays. I, I, that's why I'm not, I'm not depressed after tonight from this game. Because this game turned out better than somehow <laughs> I thought it was going to turn out. Truly. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. Especially with the way that it started. I was like... This is it. This is what we're gonna get the whole game. So then, the fact that they like rallied back in it, they were resilient. They fought back. I was like, think I I needed that one for my soul. Now the way that it ended, not happy. Whatever. But it's truly just where the Kings have been the last stretch of games that I think really had me feeling it. But I but I feel it, Deuce, because I feel I feel lost. Not because of the team, but because of what they can't control. And what they can't control is that the health of well, people being out. And this that season sucked. to me, and even with Monk and Herter here, yeah. this Pelicans team is going to kick that, your ass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the Kings still have all the problems that we could talk about. But <laughs> Yes. I'm I, not the, acting like they were going to. When yes. Monk went down in that opening quarter yeah. against the Mavs. Mm-hmm. Our hearts sank after that game when we found sank. out because we go, this, this screws you. This screws you. You're missing a guy, another guy who could break down the defense. And with Kevin Herter, what you're missing is someone who could space the floor. You're going, what do you mean? He wasn't hitting threes. No, no, no. Here's the thing about him is even if he's not hitting threes, if you're an NBA player, if you're an NBA team, you are defending Kevin yep. Herter. You're going to make sure he can't get it going. You're going to top lock him coming off dribble handoffs, you're not going to allow him to get that ball to get in the rhythm and hit that three, right? With Keon Ellis, I'm watching him tonight. He got a three in the corner. Najee Marshall did not even come over to contest it. He stared on it, stared at him. Keon Ellis is shooting over 40% from three, but these NBA teams don't, they're like, cool, prove it, prove it, prove it. So by that mentality... It's great because Keon could get some good opportunities and, and knock down some shots right now. But what it does too is like it, it makes the paint crowded. Yep. You don't People have people aren't shifting. It down. People aren't yeah, trusting it's... that everyone else is a threat, and that's exact. Those two guys pose as such big threats on the offensive end for this team. And I mean, I we've talked about that Willsy stat that he yeah. shared about the assists to Malik Monk and Kevin Herter this year from Domas Sabonis, and it's almost 50% of his assists are to those guys. Um, yeah, it's it's tough, but I guess my whole point is I think this stretch in the realization of this is the team, even though I believe that I believe they have a better chance of beating the Suns tomorrow. Yeah, like, truly. I, I don't even know what to think about right. that game. That's fine. It, you also have this chain reaction, all right? So Monk's, like, if Monk's playing tonight, maybe the Kings end up playing more Trey Lyles instead of Barnes because they don't, like, we have Monk's offense. We don't need Barnes at the situation. Yeah. We can, we, so you're in this tough spot. I personally, at this point, I you cannot, against these bigger teams, play small. I need size. I need Keegan, Lyles, Sabonis up front. Roll with it. I And against these two big fronts, I know they're not a lot in this league, but, like, if you've played Minnesota, I would experiment sometimes with an Alex Len Sabonis front line. Also, side note, you're worried about spacing? I grant you that. Alex Len has shown the ability to hit the three in the NBA before. He hasn't done it in Sacramento for whatever, whatever reason. Maybe they don't want him shooting threes. Sure. He can do it. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, big picture-wise, this is where we're at. The Sacramento Kings are a playing team, and this is scary. You're a play-in situation, and it's not clinched yet, and you have two games left. You play the Suns and the Blazers coming up, okay? Why this is so scary? Because you are tied right now with the Golden State Warriors and the Lakers. You could be playing as a seventh seed at home. You could be playing the Suns or the Pelicans, maybe. That would not be good. I doubt you're playing the Pelicans at this point. You would play. It's probably good. So, but you could, you could be seven, you could be eight, you could be nine or ten at this point. You have to, have to find a way to stay 7-8. I, so, it's about me, but I saw a TikTok the other day, and it was about Zodiac signs, and it was like, the two most unhappy Zodiac signs, and one of them said Virgo, and that's mine, and I said, for, I'm like, what the shit? I'm always happy. Like, wh- who's this dummy? And... They're, they're talking about how Virgos are unhappy when there's something that 
they can't control or that is the unknown. And the, a lot of that, like, that's just like human nature. That's going to happen. And I think when it comes to this, where I find myself is in the unknown with where the Kings are actually going to land and not even, not even about my personal life and what I have to figure out with outfits and all the other things for TV. But it's like, it's like truly what it does for my fandom soul is make me really sad not knowing today like this is about this is probably what it's gonna be this is where they're going to be who are they gonna play who else is gonna oh my be god there? how nice was it last year we we're going oh Kings warriors god. i mean it wasn't nice you're worried about playing the warriors but you're like it was well, at least, so nice dude, we at the end of last season we were like not, we were tripping right they got the three seed are they gonna win 50 games yeah you know like the unknown yeah, this yeah. year it's is tough just, it's really tough Appreciate everyone hanging out with us late on a Thursday night after a really tough loss. Appreciate you Kings fans being here, maybe NBA fans, Pelicans fans around the world. Make sure if you have not yet, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. The poll question for tonight, will the Kings make the playoffs? Uh, the options, no, bounced in the play-in. And yes, I believe 71% of the people who have voted tonight say, nope, bounced in the play-in. Yeah, it's going to be tough. I mean, you, if you're in the 7-8, you just need to win once to get in. So if you lose in the first game, you get another chance to play the winner of the 9-10 matchup. Still going to be tough. But if you fall to 9-10, you have to win twice just to get in the playoffs. So it's stressful, and this is where it's at. Just be comfortable with the fact that this is a play-in team. This season totally shifted once Malik Monk went down, in my opinion. It, it, was, already, it was already kind of like... This is what it is, but you saw these ups and downs of, yeah. ooh, ooh, this team can still do something when they are all engaged and playing together and playing some really good basketball. When Malik Monk went down, those hopes and dreams kind of shattered. Yep. It was like, okay, can you guys pick it up with what you have? But you learned so much that this league and – what you have down the roster really matters. And by the way, that's not acting like the guys that are playing are bums or anything. You you think about guys like Keon and Colby, I think of experience though. You know, I think I, yeah. it's not, it's not about even Keon that that's what I said. Keon and Colby. I th uh, sorry. I thought you said okay. Kessler in my head. I heard and Kessler. Hey, how yeah. about, yeah, sure. But my, I get, my point is it's like, that's not their fault. They just haven't been in the league long enough. They haven't been given these opportunities long enough. So that's where we're at. If yeah, and I was gonna say if the Kings do miss the playoffs this year, they get to keep their pick this year, but it's not supposed to be a very good draft. And then they have uh, the issue where they still owe Atlanta a pick, which presents prevents them from moving some future picks. That gets really damaging. But we're not there yet. We're not there yet. Yeah. The story's not done yet. You could still get in okay, and get Cody a first round Rose. series. I'm not even doing a Cody. I'm not even trying to give anybody false hope. But like the reality is, they could still get in. And they can still get in. Got to finish the story. <laughs> get to the first round, you son of a bitch. A uh, couple of things from tonight. Uh, the Pelicans ends up, they end up shooting 57%. They were 55% from three. They were 22 of 40 from three. Uh, we talked about CJ. CJ got into such a rhythm, and I was so impressed with some of his finishes around the ram. Then he starts hitting threes. And then he's just taking threes that aren't even open and burying them. He was just in <laughs> yes. such a rhythm, just unbelievable. Trey Murphy got really hot early, oh. got so many open looks in that first half that really got him going. And I thought he did a great job getting to the free throw line. Seven of eight at the free throw line. He had 27, Zion with 31. A game changer tonight. We mentioned him, a couple of his plays. But Alvarado, dude, he mm. filled up the stat sheet. He played 22 minutes in this game. And you want to talk about an impact? Love this guy. It, it's one of, he's one of those guys that, God, I just wish he was on my team because he annoys yeah, the shit Yeah, otherwise I hate him. Totally. But he's legit. 14 points, 6 assists, 6 rebounds in 22 minutes. And the threes that, that he was guy. making, the threes that he were making were not just like, the one in the oh, corner. like. The one in the corner. They were deflating as hell type of threes and just to rub it in everyone's face. You know, he'd do like the three <laughs> to the crowd. Yeah. I was like, you son of a bitch, but yeah, an impact player. And he's super fun to watch. Yeah. And honestly tonight, Deuce, if I was an NBA fan watching TNT tonight and I'm watching the Pelicans, I'm going, 
I'm going, I'm scared of that team. Yeah. If I'm a Western Conference team. Without Brandon Ingram, by the way. Without B.I. He's coming back this week. Yes, yes. And so without him, but also I'm like looking at the the style of play. You know, not just watching Zion. I know you and I, from the start of watching Zion in this league, have been just like mesmerized by his ability to move at with his size. But like you look at how it forms with all the other pieces and just like CJ being that vet on this squad and just what it does. And then for some of these guys like Herb Jones and their length to just pose as such a threat on the defensive end. Trey Murphy is coming into his own. Yes. Like he's been playing really well, especially since the break. Respect. You get B.I. back. Alvarado, if he can stay on the floor, he's maybe a small dude, but that guy is everywhere, makes shit happen. Even Dyson Daniels tonight, like, hey, they weren't going to defend him. He's going to be in the corner, ready. Yep. Knocks down a couple of threes. He gives you 10 points off the bench. They were fantastic in this game. They look like a really, they look like a threat. Like, they look like a team that belongs in the top six, and Agreed. they've had to find ways to do it. You know, I think now they have improved to 10 and 7 when Ingram doesn't play this season. But, wow. you mean, that's 17 games he yeah. hasn't played. And they're a top six team right yep. now. So, I don't know that anyone would be excited to play them in a series. And, you know, I know it's all about matchups and, you know, maybe you could play Valanchunas off the floor, depending on what type of team you have, you can go to small, but they obviously pose some threats. And so, you know, they, they were also without Larry Nance tonight. Shout out to the chat. Also appreciate the chat for being here. I see the chat tonight. You know, I'm trying to do a better bet job of balancing things. Cause we have people who are, you know, upset tonight. I get it. They're venting. They got hot takes everywhere, flamethrowers. Oh. You got some rational people in there. I appreciate you. Uh, some people have met. There's one person that mentioned, man, I do feel like the Kings missed Terrence Davis this year. And to be honest, and I, he, he's out right now, obviously, with a, a ruptured Achilles from the G League. But, dude, I agree. I mean, you think about last year, a guy, another guy that can come in and just get hot. He scored 30 points in a game last year. And he, was, it, he had that monk yep. confidence yep. about him. That it's spark. His, it's spark. his replacement, Chris Duarte, does not have. Sure, sure. There's there's more. I would say that there's a different type of control to Chris Duarte's game. Be, like, he's honed in on a lot of his chaotic energy and done a much better job of controlling that. But, yeah, but that extra spark, yeah. you know, just having one extra player that does that, it's, it's very beneficial. Uh, Kings tonight shot just under 55%. So that's a good number. Uh, they were 42% from three, 14 turnovers for 18 points. But the Pelicans had 13 turnovers that turned into 24 points. De'Aaron Fox, I thought, was really good tonight. I thought he was the reason they got back in the game. 33 points for him. Yep. He was 11 of 18 shooting, 8 of 10 at the free throw line. He also had eight assists, five rebounds. The one thing that's going to eat him a little bit, the six turnovers mm. in the game. And he had some tough ones late when the Kings went to a horn set. Second time they go to a horn set. The first time it worked, he got to the basket, scored. Next time, Pelicans blew it up. Just active hands because their length turnover. That was tough. Keegan had 19, five rebounds for him. He had a couple of steals, two. Demonis Sabonis had a double-double, 18 points, 10 rebounds, four assists, two steals, eight of 12 shooting. He had a deal with Zion, Valanchunas. That's just a tough matchup. I we're going to have a lot of time to talk about the future mm -hmm. after the season mm -hmm. and all that stuff. But one note I want to say is... What's the note? Get Monty McNair. Get me some more size up front. If you can upgrade that four spot, it changes things for the Sacramento Kings. Fox is legit. I think Sabonis is legit. Keegan, you have to improve that spot. It is a weakness, not just against the Pelicans, against other teams, and it impacts Demonis Sabonis. You need more creation. You're seeing it more than ever with Malik Monk gone. You need another guy that can go out and get a bucket to take pressure off these guys. If you have the pieces, it makes life easier. Sabonis can thrive. Fox can thrive. Everybody can thrive. But right now, this Kings team is easier than ever to defend, and it's tough. Great message. Tonight's podcast presented by our friends over at Northwest Exteriors. If you need windows, go check out Northwest Exteriors. Morgan Reagan. Um, hell yeah. You got to check out Northwest Exteriors. They've got new deals going on in April. Um, going on end of April, I'm sorry. But also, they're just so great. 
Yeah. They're so great in so many different ways. And you probably are looking on the outside of your house and going, what needs to change? What's wrong with my house? It's probably your windows. Like, let's be honest. And then the inside of your house, you're like, ah, why is the sun so bright? Probably because you don't have UV protection on your windows. Didn't know that that was even a thing until I dealt with Northwest Exteriors, and my life has completely changed. Yeah, so go check out the experts. You can go to their website, TrustNorthwest.com. Go to their showroom in Rancho Cordova. Meet with them. And if you decide you're going to go with them, they'll come to your house, check it all out. They don't subcontract. You're not going to have some weird delay. They get the job done. They do it right. And you will not regret it because Morgan Reagan, sing it with me now. They are simply the best. Trust Northwest. <sighs> Who's a rock and soul player of the game? CJ McCollum. Zion Williamson. Sure. Trey Murphy. Jose Alvarado. Oh, I'm going to say the players of the game tonight, the Pels. The Pels? The Pels? No, look. This was a big game for them. Yeah. They were shorthanded. And they played physical. They played. They're just a better team. And they, there was something on the line. They didn't want to play a play-in game. They want to be in the top six. Also, I think we have to acknowledge this. It's not easy to beat a team, sweep a team in a season. It's hard. Especially when you've destroyed that team. Mm -hmm. You're coming to their house. Like a team can usually make adjustments and figure out a way to slow you down. I think I saw a stat today. Uh, the last time a team swept another team 5-0 in a season. Mm -hmm. Because this doesn't happen. Yeah. Right? Because of yes, the fact yes. that teams don't normally play five times. The last time this happened was 96-97. Okay. I think the Heat did it to the Nets. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Long but now, time. Kings... Change that up in 2024. Yeah, Rock and Soul Diner is in Sacramento, by the way. Just six blocks from Golden Once. They're having a big rager party. <laughs> Tomorrow night. Tomorrow April night. April 12th following King's Sons. Yes. You got to go check it out. And hopefully you're celebrating a King's win. Yeah, hopefully it's a King's win. You get 50% off your entire bill. So make sure to go to yeah. Rock and Soul Diner. There's going to be a whole bunch of uh, little raffle prizes. So many things going on. DJ at 10 o'clock. Just go check it out. You won't regret. Appreciate their support of the Do Some More podcast. Uh, in the chat, Ron says, was it not a big game for the Kings? Okay, just, what do you think? I, we all need to take a deep breath for a second. I know we're on edge because the Kings lost. I was crediting the Pelicans for showing up in a big game and understanding what's on the line for them. It's, of course, it was a big game for the Kings. And as we talked about, they didn't match the physicality of what, to me, is a big game. Like, they, they didn't bring it like it was a big game from the start. That's why you got down 33 to 11 or whatever it was to start this game. That, to me, is another reason why this offseason, you got to find some dogs, some guys that aren't going to get punked, some guys that are going to bring consistent physicality. Hell, one of the guys on the Pelicans, Najee Marshall, love that guy. He's a free agent after this year. Love to have him in Sacramento because he's part of that. But you also need more talent as well. So, yeah, of course it was a big game. I, I wasn't saying it wasn't a big game for the Kings. I was acknowledging that the Pelicans showed up in a big-time way. <sighs> super Chats? Let's get some Super Chats. Super Chats. Silly Sill donates 20 bucks. Say win tomorrow and Sunday. Lock in the eight seed. Win your playing game. Get the seven seed. Win the first round series. Let's go. Oh, and I need a Morgan song. Give me a hell yeah. Uh, silly. So I, I, first of all, appreciate your optimism. I like your spirit and it's very possible. You can beat the suns. You've yeah. done it a couple of times this year. Yeah. Uh, and then you got the blazers in the final game of the season. I, Warriors just beat them by like what? Eight tonight. Yeah. The Warriors sat some guys stepped in and play well. They had escaped with a win. By the way, the Warriors final two games, they play the Pelicans tomorrow. So that's an interesting game. A tired Pelicans team. May a tired Warriors team, huh? Oh, yeah. Tired ha, Warriors ha, team. Yeah. And then the Warriors finish their season at home against the, the Jazz. The Lakers, again, we're mentioning the team's tied. The Lakers play tomorrow at Memphis. Ooh. Well, that should be a W. And then they finish the final game of the season against? The Pelicans. The Pelicans. So, yeah. Sweet. Bye. So, hey. It is what it is, Mom. <laughs> Uh, Sebastian donates two bucks saying, what do you think KOC is saying the Kings should miss the playing or playoffs? I'm guessing. Um, I mean, I just disagree. If he said, I don't know if he said that or not, I would say I disagree. I mean, 
to me, playoff experience is beyond beneficial. And yeah. I want the Kings to get a first-round series for many reasons. One, the experience. Two, I want the draft pick to go to Atlanta so the Kings can have flexibility to make some more trades, move that 25 pick, 26, 27, whatever that is. Yeah, please, dear God. Uh, Oleg donates five bucks. Appreciate you. Just how many games this season have we said that the Kings will win? They did not. I don't know if we said that very much, but yeah, I hear you. Um, Donald says, is this season a failure if uh, we don't win the play-in? Yeah, I mean, I, I to me, this season, like, you, you needed to be a playoff team again. So I don't think anyone would look at this season and be like, man, you know what? We made the play-in and good job, awesome work. No, well, I think there would be immense disappointment. You could acknowledge that some pieces and maybe players progress, but the goal was to advance. Yeah. And they did not. And, I mean, you – you look at this Western Conference and you yeah. go, everyone got better, but why didn't you get better? You know, and that's, I, I think those are the, qu like, you can't, last year, after the trade deadline, when the Kings were what, in third, fourth place in the West, it was like, d every team's going to get better and you're not making any moves. So they really believed in what they had and it was, it was, it was good. It was smart. They ran it back this year. They believed. But sometimes when you believe that much and then no adjustments are made and every team in this conference yeah. was showing adjustments with their rosters and then on paper with the win-loss column, all the things, like, you got to look at yourself in the mirror and go, okay, big change is coming. Yeah, and then, you know, you, you think about the other thing, like the Pelicans last year were all banged up. Right, they, they didn't even make the playoffs last year, right? So if you you go back to last year, the Pelicans. I love that you're asking me like I remember anything. So they're playing. They, they were they they were playing, okay, forty two and forty. But Dallas didn't make it, okay. Yeah. So Dallas didn't make it. The Pelicans weren't really a threat. OKC was a play in. Hell, the Minnesota T Wolves were a play in. The Lakers, Minnesota. They got better. They got healthy. The Gobert thing ended up working in year two. Nas Reed's taking a step. They just got better, right? OKC, Chet in the fold, healthy, SGA MVP level, surge to the top. Mm. The Pelicans, what do you know? Zion stays healthy this year. Yeah. Much better team. They surge. Dallas, you know, they missed the playoffs last year after making the Kyrie trade. Beyond disappointing for them. And... They end up getting lively in the draft. They trade for Holmes. Mm -hmm. They sign Grant Williams. They thought that was going to be enough. Yeah. Then they realized Grant Williams is not working here. Rashawn, we don't play him. We need. They were aggressive. They made quick adjustments. Aggressive. And the biggest difference, and people love to hate on Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving's playing like one of the best players in the game right now. Nice. Luca, to me. Has got to be in a real conversation for MVP now. One hundred percent. He's been doing it all year. They've been banged up. They hit on their offseason tweaks. Dante Exum mm -hmm. nailed it. Derek Jones nailed it. The, the trades, the trades. Gafford. The, I mean, yeah, the trade deadline. The trade deadline to me. I remember when we talked about it that day. Yeah, we were we were excited. PJ Washington at first wasn't wasn't living up to it. But it just, it took a little bit. Like, even I, even even if he has his ups and downs, he's still, like, an upgrade. And Gafford, the, Gafford oh. is a huge upgrade. Yep. Um, it, it's, they, they made moves. They, they did, and the, the biggest difference is Kyrie Irving missed 22 games in, like, the first part of the season. Yeah. And they, they held serve. They, they stayed steady because Luka was playing at an absurd level. And then they make the moves. Kyrie comes back February 3rd. And then the deadline comes. They make the moves. Mm. They haven't looked back. Kyrie and Luca are playing at a crazy high level right now. They've got two guys that can destroy you. They've got some shooting around them. And they're playing some good defense. They're playing some of the best basketball in the NBA right now. They were aggressive and made moves. The Kings did not do anything. So we're talking about two trade deadlines where the biggest moves they made were like the Robin Lopez cash considerations and Kessler Edwards, mm -hmm. the off season moves, all of them were swing and misses except bringing back Trey Lyles. I think bringing back Trey Lyles was a huge win for yep. them, but JaVale McGee, that's an L mm -hmm. Chris Duarte. That's an L Sasha has been an L and now I'm not saying him. I'm just, 
what what's he done for this group? Yeah. So you missed on all of those, and then everybody else got better. And guess what? Next year, yeah, Houston probably gonna be better. And by the way, I think too when you mention those guys, there's other things that factors in sometimes. Like you think about all the times that even Mike Brown has talked about Javale McGee and his veteran sure. leadership, and but they also him brought him the voice. To play him being a voice, all those things. And I completely understand that. I think sometimes you are betting on that you can get the, yep. the most and get both sides of that. And then when you, you don't, yeah, sure. It is what it is. Chris Duarte, I mean, look at what his best year in the league was when he was playing his rookie year with Sabonis in Indiana. It, it's more, I acknowledge all the things at yeah. the time. You you understood I, I like I, you understood that there was logic behind the moves. I'm that's, not saying there wasn't, I but know. they didn't work out. That's yes. all I'm saying. Okay. That's what you're judged on. You're judged on whether they work out no, or I they don't. It. I mean, great example, Dallas. No one was going, hey man, Dante Exum, what a pickup for the Mavs when they did it. No, he was like out of the NBA, went overseas and came back, and then he turns out to be a really good pickup for them. I mean, yeah. sometimes it's it's luck, sometimes it just works out, it's situational, all that stuff. So yeah, I, I hear you on that. Ah, and we're going to have so much time to talk about this after know, the season. But I know, I know. We sprinkled a little bit. We in. sprinkled. Okay, so next up for the Sacramento Kings, a uh, quick turnaround. They take on the Phoenix Suns. The Suns, just a weird year. And you talk about a team that made some moves at the deadline, right? They made some moves too. This team, you can talk about them making moves, but they, they are all in. Talk about the disappointment in Sacramento we're feeling this year right now about the potential missing the playoffs. This Phoenix Suns team, made moves to win a championship. <laughs> they don't have draft picks. They don't have cap space. They are they are all in. And they are fighting to be maybe a top six or be a play-in team. They're coming off a loss to the Clippers. And then last night, the Clippers don't play anybody. Mm -hmm. Okay, first off, the, the first game against the Clippers, they got destroyed at home. It was pathetic. It was a bad showing down from the get. Down like 40 or something at one point. You play the Clippers again. They're sending all their guys. And the Clippers had it. They had a chance to win, right? It was close in the fourth quarter. They end up prevailing. So the Suns come to Sacramento tomorrow, uh, and then they have their final game of the year Sunday against the Minnesota T-Wolves. Um, yeah, the Suns team obviously flawed, just like the Kings. But they've got Durant. they got Booker. they got Beal. We've seen the Kings play well against them. You know who has played really well against them this year? Oh. Sasha. I'd like to see some Sasha in this game. Well, you might see some Sasha in this game, especially how many minutes did he end up playing tonight? Like 10. Yeah. So, like, you might see some Sasha minutes. <sighs> I just, I, I think it's it's one of those games where I don't know what to expect. I mean, how many times have I said that this season? Um, but I've seen them play well against the Suns. Yeah. I've also seen them just lose it. With eight yeah. minutes left in the fourth quarter, you know? When they're up 22 in Phoenix, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, they've had moments against Phoenix where they've looked really good. I think the challenge now is, okay, you're on the second. I have a back-to-back. -back. Fox played 40 minutes. Yep. And he tweaked his ankle tonight. Sure. Uh, Demonis Bones played 34. But, I mean, Fox has played back-to-back -back games of 40-plus Absolutely. Minutes, and it's the end of the season, dude, so you just don't want to have any regrets. Yep. Like, when the season's over, it's over. Yep. So, I, I mean... I, how many times have I said that too? Like, oh, don't leave, leave it all out there. You don't want to have any regrets, but it's like, yeah, it's the second night of back to back. You just sleep in your own bed tonight. Figure it out. We all do it. Except play on the floor and make millions of dollars, but we all do it. Sharif Jewelers moment of the game. I think in this one, it might have to be the chicken wing being thrown on the floor. And then Kevin Harlan talking about oh. the chicken wing being thrown on the floor. Why did a fan throw a chicken wing on the floor tonight? I'm hoping it was a Pelicans fan. Or a child. Child would be good. Child yeah, no, would no. be like... A, a, an adult game. You lost! Take that! Well, I saw something got thrown on the floor. I thought it was one of the glow sticks that the fans had, but it was a chicken wing. Yeah. No, it was a chicken wing, and Kevin Harlan was like basically uh, breaking down, you know, who throws down a chicken, a, a good chicken wing when people are hungry, mm. and he was so hungry, and he hadn't eaten for a while, and he wanted that chicken wing. It was great. How was the broadcast tonight with was, Harlan and Miller? It was good. It was good. I mean, so many good moments from the Pelicans, so so many highlights. Mm. from. But the game felt big, and that's what Kevin Harlan does such a fantastic job of with every single one of his freaking calls. Um, Reggie, for the most part, seemed prepared, you know, not – so, you know, 
Some, some there's there's a few moments in there when they're they're talking about like oh we know that the you know Reggie's like their offense is is good all year long it's their defense you know just like yeah, little yeah, yeah, things yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. it's like, like you're not really paying old attention. story you know um one good vibe thing for tomorrow what Chris Weber at the game tomorrow night yeah he is can he play no. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Chris, I know you're here. Can you throw on that number four jersey and give us 10 minutes? We need your size tonight. He'll be on the broadcast with me. Oh, he's going to not just he's going to be joining pregame for a segment, right? Or for the, two segments. Oh. So it'll be it'll be Kyle hosting me and Chelsea and Chris effing Weber. That's four. Should I bring one of my Chris Weber poems from like? Yes. Okay. He needs to see that. I've He's definitely seen it before. I've just like shove it in his face anytime. Like, <laughs> yeah, he's going to be at the next two games, I think. Oh, man. Uh, Sebastian donating two bucks. All third team, Wemby or Sabonis, be honest, LOL. I mean, I don't. I haven't looked at the, the third. I, I haven't even looked at that. So, I mean, I, I'll be honest, Sebastian. I know you're a Spurs fan. I'm going to just be brutally honest with you. Victor is going to make a ton of all NBA teams in his career. He doesn't need to make one his rookie year when he's won. What, how many games has the Spurs won this year? You know, like, like let's get real about it. Uh, but he's, I mean... He's going to be on it all the time. Magical. He yeah, I'm not. Magical. I, he, they have 20 wins. They're last in the West. You don't get an all NBA team <laughs> in the all NBA team when you're last in the West. Just reality. <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, yeah, but Chris Weber will be in the building for Kings and Sons. Uh, and we're going to be back here talking about this tomorrow night. My final thought on this one. I'm obviously bummed that they're not a top six team. I already had it in my head for the last, I don't know, week and a half that they were going to be a playing team. Yeah. And I know Kings fans are feeling it right now. Um, I think the the thing I can tell you is, dude, this team's flawed. And it's in the early goings of this. This is year two of them being competitive. And I've seen many people talk about it. I've seen fans say it. And I've seen people in the media say this too. It's like, I can't wait for the season to be over. This season, blah, blah, blah. And I just go... I need you guys to take a step back. Oh, Let's not get jaded. Yes, 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 Let's yes. not be over the top here. I don't want to go back to watching 25-win basketball, 28-win basketball. You. That's not fun to me, okay? You can acknowledge that this team needs to get better, and they have to make tweaks if they're going to be competitive in this crazy-ass Western Conference that will only get better. But they have 45 wins. Yeah. They had 48 last year. I'll take this over 27, 25 wins, 16 years of dog shit. So if you're like, I'm so ready for the season, I'll be over. Dude, be careful what you wish for because this shit changes fast in sports. It can go bad really fast. It can go good really fast. Just try your best to understand where they're at now, where they can be in the offseason, and they still have a chance here to make the playoffs. Ups, They've got a shot. Ups and downs are not easy yep. in life or in sports. But the only difference is in sports, they're much more fun when you're more up, right? Sure. And we've all seen, if you are a Kings fan here, we've all seen the downs, the low, low, lows. And like even when the ups were happening in the lows, oh man, can the Kings add Rondo and make a playoff <laughs> series? Like yeah. the desperation kicks in. I would much rather be here. And I say that. And with anyone that's goes, that's not that doesn't need to be your mindset. You need to be a champion. Well, go move to Boston. Like I, I don't know what to well, tell you. Like just well, uh, they still have to do it. How are they, they gonna? Feel, how are Suns fans gonna feel? Celtics fans. Guess what? The only people that are happy at the uh, end of the goddamn NBA season are, are the, the teams champions. that hold the Larry O'Brien. Yes. Last year was the Denver Nuggets. Everyone else is fighting and clawing to find a way. It's one fan base every year to get to the next level. One team. So my whole point is like, dude. All right. Uh, this year, you could be frustrated with this year, disappointed with this all year. All the things. All the feel emotions. It. Feel Hell it. yeah. I'm with you there. Yep. I'm with you. I wanted a top six. I wanted a playoff series. That perspective. But, okay, this is where we're at now. There's two games left. Uh -huh. Suns and Blazers. Yes. Then you have to go play a play-in. Go win the goddamn play-in and get a playoff series. If I would have told you a couple of years ago, hey, maybe you got a chance. You're going to be playing meaningful games. Dude, the final two games of this season – mean something you're going to be playing one additional postseason game at minimum to get to the playoffs 
it means something. I want to play meaningful goddamn basketball. And so I am going to enjoy the final Watch two it. games. I'm going to enjoy the play-in. Yep. And if it doesn't go well, well, guess what? We're going to all be here together, going through it, trying to talk it out, <laughs> yeah. venting, yelling, breaking screaming, it down. breaking it down, being everything, feeling everything, and figure out what has to happen to get to the next level. So call me naive. Nah, I'm not ready for this to be over yet. And if you're a media member that's like, this season, I'm done with it. Then find a new line of work. If you don't like covering a team that wins 45 games, you really want to sign up and watch a 20-win team when the season's over in January. If you're a fan that's like, oh, I'm just done with this team. Fine. I mean, I guess come back when they win 50 games. I don't know what else you want. I don't want to go back to 20 win land. Dear God. No, thank no. you. Let's enjoy it now. It's all we got left. Give me a hell yeah. Kings, Suns, tomorrow. Bring on the goddamn play and I'm ready for it. We love you guys. But we got to go. Thank you so much for being here. We'll see you tomorrow night. Yep. See ya. Deuce and mo, deuce and mo, deuce and mo, they tell